Good morning, everybody. So let's get started. Just a quick introduction. My name is Anthony. I work here at the Orange County Association of Realtors. Thank you all very much for attending today's web webinar of Beyond the Basics, Advanced uh, Zip Forms Digital Signing of Contracts. What we're going to go over today is basically how to do digitally sign documents using DocuSign, as well as digitally sign documents using Digital Ink. We'll go over the differences between the two. We'll show you how to set that up in Zip Forms to digitally sign one way or the other, and then, of course, how to send it out to a client, and then we're going to show you with both systems how a client digitally signs documents, okay? With that said, let's get started here. So what we're going to do is we're going to digitally sign documents uh, using either DocuSign or Digital Ink. So it really comes down to us logging into Zip Forms. Before we do that, just to go over a couple of differences between the two, DocuSign versus Digital Link. DocuSign is a third-party vendor. That third-party vendor, if you go to DocuSign.com, Here, you can go to DocuSign.com, sign up for their free trial service. Now, their free trial service for realtor members allows a realtor to be able to digitally sign five transactions one time that month absolutely free, or you can sign <clears throat> one transaction five times that month absolutely free or a combination of the two. Anything above and beyond that, those five digital signing choices or those sessions, DocuSign wants you to sign up for their paid service. Now, their paid service is about $20 a month for unlimited signing. Uh, I do believe that translates to be about $250 per year, I do believe. Uh, some agents have told me that the renewal for a realtor has been as high as uh, $400 a year, but it looks to be that right now they're running a per month pro, uh, plan or an annual fee of $240 per year. So that costs you money. Now on the opposite spectrum here, Digital Inc. Digital Inc. is part of Zip Forms. So it's been created by Zip Logics. Who created Zip Forms? And like Zip Forms, you can create as many transactions as you want at no cost. Digital Inc. allows you to sign unlimited transactions, unlimited amount of times for virtually $0. So if we think about this real quickly, 240 $250 out of your pocket versus zero. Honestly, there are agents out there that swear up and down that DocuSign is the end-all and be-all of digital signing contracts, and they've been using it for years, so that's what they like to use. It really depends on personal choice. So today's class is going to go over those two choices. Now, the one thing that I am going to show you today, if you are a DocuSign user and you are attending today's class, or even better yet, maybe you're thinking about using DocuSign, Sure, go to DocuSign.com, sign up for their free trial. What we're going to do is we're going to log into our ZipForms account. Now, when we log into our ZipForms account, when we log into our ZipForms account, typically an agent using DocuSign are usually following these steps. They create the transaction in their transaction list. Then they have to go into the transaction after they've typed up the transaction under documents, and then they have to save as PDF files these unsigned contracts onto their computer. Then they're finding themselves go into DocuSign, upload the PDF documents, where now they have to place all the digital signing areas indicating to their signers where they need to sign an initial. Well, we're going to eliminate that step. DocuSign can be merged with your ZipForms account. So whether you're using the free service or the paid service, we can merge our DocuSign account into ZipForms. So that way we don't have to export any documents. How we do that is very simply, we're going to come over to the top right corner and we're going to click on where it says me. When we click on where it says me, we're going to get a drop down menu. From here, we're going to click on the choice that says View Profile. When we click on View Profile, in our profile settings, we're going to go to the gray bar here, and we're going to go to where it says Settings. When we click on Settings, our very first option here, and it looks like it was already selected, typically you're going to see this. Our very first option here says E-Signature Options. This means that where I can pick and choose my digital signing service. Now typically, every agent or every realtor that's part of CAR 
is automatically defaulted into Digital Link because again, Digital Link is your free member benefit. Now, if you have signed up for DocuSign or thinking about signing up for DocuSign, you'll notice that right above the Digital Ink choice, you have a DocuSign choice. From here, when we click on the DocuSign choice, this green button right here will say Link Existing DocuSign Account. So you could get a DocuSign account and pay the $240, $250 for this subscription. Or if we've already gone to DocuSign.com, we've already signed up for it, even the free version, we're just going to click on Link Existing DocuSign Account. From here, we're going to input our DocuSign account information. Put in our username, put in our password. Now it, you'll see here that it says that the account has now been linked. To save this as my digital signing preference for all of my transactions, I'm going to come over back to the top left and click Save. When I click Save, this now means that my DocuSign choice is has been selected to be used for all of my transactions. So now... I, as an agent, do not need to export the contracts out of zip forms and upload into DocuSign. Because I have selected DocuSign as my preferred di digital signature option, when I go to eSign documents within zip forms, the digital areas will automatically be placed on 90% of all the forms in DocuSign. So I don't have to export anything. So we've saved ourselves some steps. Are there any questions so far? So we're now ready to go and digitally sign documents. My disclaimer before we do any digital signing of any documents, the one thing that I always ask agents to do is to make sure that please make sure that all parties involved in your transaction are okay with accepting digitally signed documents. And the reason why I say this is that not every lend or not every vendor like title, escrow, and lenders that you will work with will accept digitally signed documents. Not every agent that you work with on the other side of the transaction will accept digitally signed documents. And most importantly, not every client. So we got to do some communication ahead of time. Depending on your vendors, ask your title, lender, and escrow uh, contacts, do you accept digitally signed documents? Ask the other agent on the other side of the transaction, hey, I'd like to do digital signings for my clients. Will you accept them? It'll be a quick yes or no answer. And of course, judge your clients. Ask your clients, do you prefer sitting down and signing the contracts physically or because of the digital age, would you prefer getting a, an email to digitally sign contracts? And one big indicator about their technical expertise, if a client or clients do not have email addresses, chances are you're not going to be digitally signing contracts because the last thing you want to do is to do digital signatures and then find out in the eighth hour, you've got to run around town getting real signatures. So save yourself that hassle. So in our perfect world, it's two or three o'clock in the morning. Our clients are getting on a plane headed to Maui. Unfortunately, we're not getting on the plane with them to get them to sign these contracts, but the plane does have Wi-Fi for right now, right? They are allowed to take their computer and tablet devices with them on a plane. They will have access to their email. And I've already double checked with all my vendors and the other agent on the other side of the transaction to make sure that they do accept digitally signed contracts. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our transaction. We're going to go to the documents button in the transaction. We have our contracts that we've uploaded. By the way, I've uploaded a PDF document. I can digitally sign that as well. I just have to indicate to the signer where they need to sign an initial on this document. We'll show you how to place those today. From here, after I've typed up the contracts, I'm going to come over to the top left corner and click on the button that says eSign. When I select eSign, here will be a list of all my digital signing history for this transaction. As you notice, there is no digital signing history because this is a brand new transaction for me and my clients. At the very top left, next to where it says back, I'm going to click on where it says new. And I'm going to highlight that for you. I'm going to click on the button that says new. I'm going to create a new signature packet. When I choose that, from here, we are now going to select what documents are going to be digitally signed by my clients. So in this case, my clients are going to sign the purchase agreement. They're going to sign the commission agreement. And I've got a letter from the um, and actually, let's close that out. I want to add in a couple of other documents here or a different document. I accidentally chose the wrong PDF. So let's do that again. Add a document, browse the computer for the document, 
And now we are looking for, I don't know, a company disclosure. All right, now again, we go back to eSign, new, purchase agreement, commission agreement, and this agreement between me and my client for the company. When I hit close, here are the documents that we selected. At the very top where it says signing service, you notice that it has selected DocuSign because that was our preferred digital signature choice under our settings. We do not need to worry about naming the packet because the name of the packet will be the name of the transaction that's sent to the client. From here, with the document selected and our, di and our signing service chosen, we're now going to click over here in the right-hand corner, Next. From here, we now select the signers. This is the, where the power of the cover sheet form comes into play. If I have a cover sheet in a transaction, page one of the cover sheet, if I fill that in with my client's first name, last name, and email address, then when I go to digitally sign documents, the first name, last name, and email address will be pulled from the cover sheet. If I do not have a cover sheet as part of the transaction, then the first name and last name will only be filled in based on what's been written on the contract. Before I can select the signer, I would then need to click on the email button or email section to be able to type in a physical email address. I always recommend having a cover sheet because the cover sheet has not only all the common areas of all the forms, but just for page one alone, to be able to fill in a first name, last name, and email address of my client, this helps out with digital signing. Now, from here, with the first name, last name, and email address of my signers, I'm now going to select my signers. In this case, I'm selecting my buyers and myself. You'll notice that I did not select the listing agent. Reason why I'm not going to select the listing agent is that I cannot force or I should not be forcing the listing agent to sign the acceptance of my offer. Most agents, when it comes to their offers, are making mistakes by including the listing agent as a signer. If the listing agent does not sign this session, then that means that technically no official signed contracts have been submitted to the listing agent to officially submit to their sellers. Avoid that. All you should need to worry about as an agent, whether you're representing a seller or a buyer, is just your side of the transaction. Now, unless you represent both listing side and buying side, you should really only care about your side of the transaction, meaning yourself and your clients. Only select your clients and you, because now once those sessions or that signature session is done, you can now officially submit it to the other side to be able to count your dates based on your contracts. Here, I've got my clients selected. If you'll notice, as I select my signers, after I select them, I'm going to hit close. From here, this is where we're going to have a little fun. We've got Stan, Martha, and me. This is in a particular order, number one, two, and three. This is the order in which I selected them. This is the order in which the email will go out to the signer, meaning that Stan will get the email first before Martha. I will not get the email until Martha and Stan have signed the documents. Order may be important for you. We can switch this around. Maybe after you've talked to Stan and Martha, Martha says that she took off work today and that she can get to the documents before Stan. So do I want Martha to be second or first? I want her to be first. How we switch the order, we come over to the four-way arrow. We click on it with our mouse. We hold it down. We drag it above number one, and we let go. Now we've just switched the order. Now, some of you in this attending to the webinar today want to send this these documents out to everybody all at the same time. Well, you can do that too. Simply hover over top of the number, click on the down arrow next to the number, and make everybody number one. That means that now Martha, Stan, and myself all get the email request to sign the documents within the first five minutes. There is no waiting. Typically, I don't like doing that. A couple of reasons. One, if I happen to look at, I sign the documents right away, but then after two or three days, I notice that the, I have not gotten the completed signed documents back. And I go and check on the history and I notice that maybe Martha only signed one of the three documents and Stan's only signed two of the three documents. Now I personally have to make multiple phone calls to people to figure out why they didn't finish signing the document. And I don't like making multiple phone calls. So this is where I like to leave it in the order. The other reason why I like to leave things in an order, if you notice that in this case, Stan and Martha share an email. 
if I were to send this out at the same time to both my parties, it could be very easily that because they get two different links sent at the same time at the same email address, Martha could click on a link, but then all of a sudden she's signing as Stan. Stan clicks on the other link, and now he's signing as Martha. Technically, according to California law, spouses are not allowed to sign documents for each other without a formal power of attorney. So do not let spouses sign for one another. If your spouses share one email address, please leave the documents in an order, or I should say, send it out in a signing order. That way, in this case, Martha and Stan being at the same email address, the email request will be sent to Martha or for Martha's signatures first. Then when Martha is done signing, the email request is then resent to the same email address for Stan. In this case, we're going to send them out in this order. Now, because I want to show you what a you know session is like for the signer side, I'm going to get rid of these other two signers and go with the one firm signer here. That way I can show you what a signer experiences. But now with our signers in whatever order that we want, we're going to hit next. This is where we're going to do the most important step, stage three, making sure that all the digital areas have been placed on our documents. So now DocuSign is going to open up for us because we're now chosen DocuSign. Here are some of the pluses and minuses that I like about DocuSign. What I like about DocuSign, form takes up a bit, good portion of the screen. Over here to the right hand side, we can just go right through all the pages to review our documents. What's super cool about this is that once I am done with one, or once I go through one contract, it immediately uploads the next and then the next. So it's easy for me to go and quickly review the documents. Over here to the left hand side, the signer. Underneath that, are the tasks that I can drag and drop into a form. As I mentioned earlier, 90% of your forms already have the digital areas already placed. Here in DocuSign, how do I easily tell that? Well, I have to literally go through all the documents and see what flags have been pre-placed on my forms. DocuSign requires that I review every page to make sure that my signer has something to do. Now, when I come across, say, that PDF document, that I uploaded. I need my signer to sign and initial this document, possibly. So scroll on that document. Now we can choose a task by clicking and holding down with our mouse, dragging and placing where we want that task to go. So here I just place an initial task for Stan. I can come down below further on this document. Now I can grab his signature task, drag it and place it where it needs to go. Now, once I drag a task, you'll notice that back over here to the left or to the right, it gives me some settings for this task, like a required field. I can unselect the requirement and make it an optional field. Okay. So now they optionally can initial that area or optionally, or I make it mandatory that they initial it. So what we do here at stage three is we go through all the forms and drag and drop what we need. In zip forms itself, there are a few documents that will not place the digital areas on those documents for you. That is because those forms, like the commission agreement, as an example, is a form that is signed by a principal. Even though I've got my client's names typed in on this form, this form, whether it's DocuSign or Digital Link, will not automatically place the initials or signature areas on this document. So what I need to do is to make sure that if I use a form like this, I need to make sure that I go through, drag and place my task on this form. So what I need to do is go through all these pages, make sure that all my digital areas are placed even though 90% of them are already there. I just have to review it real quick. Now, once I've done this through all my documents at the top, right corner, I'm now going to click send. When I click send, now the email has been generated and emailed off to the very first signer and they have will receive it within the first 30 seconds. Does anybody have any questions on setting up digital signatures out to a client? None? All right, perfect. Okay, so let's go through what our signer will experience. By the way, I want everybody to be able to practice this at some point. 
So please, by all means, try this out. Practice this so that way when you go over the contracts with them, you can follow along sort of with them and say, this is where you want to click and sign and click to initial because you have to explain each and every paragraph or at least make sure that your client reads and understands and if they have any questions, answer them right on the spot before they sign the contract. So let's go into my email. We're going to our email. Let's go into our email. Here within the first 30 seconds in the email, I have an email, Anthony, via DocuSign for 12345 Main Street has sent me documents to review. The client's going to click on this. Here with DocuSign, nice big yellow button that says review the documents. Now, this is what I'm going to like and dislike about DocuSign for a signer. DocuSign opens up. Here it says continue. They click continue. They hit the start button. Ready? We're now down at the bottom of the AD. Technically, the signer has not read anything on the AD. The moment they click sign, you know, they can sign it. So in a way, this is what you need to do. You need to make sure that your clients, if you're using DocuSign, go back up and read this contract. Because the moment we hit sign, they pick a font style. You can come over here to change a style. And we can, we have 23 different font styles to choose from. Or if they have a touchscreen computer, they can physically write their signature and initials. Typically, a client is always going to select a font style. From here, they click on adopt and sign. Now we're down at the bottom of the PRBS. Down at the bottom of the wire fraud. If you notice, me as the client has not read a single thing. So this is where we need as agents to make sure that our clients read and understand everything. It's too easy in the digital age not to read what it is that you're signing. So make sure that you're, you go over the contracts with your clients. Here we go. Sign, initial, initial. We're almost done with the RPA here. Just like so. Should be coming up to that commission agreement here. Oh, we just passed it. And now we don't, you know, there's the PDF document. Now we can hit finish. Moment we hit finish, it's off to the next signer. Once all signers are done, DocuSign will send you, the listing agent, two things. One, you get an email that says that your digital signatures through DocuSign are done. Click on the link to access the um, session to download and print your PDF files. You could do that, or we can go back into Zip Forms, go back into our transaction, and within the first 30 seconds of the last signer signing the document, a folder is created automatically within our transaction. In this folder are the signed PDF documents through DocuSign. We look at that real quickly. I'm going to open up one of the PDF documents here. And there is their signatures. If you notice, that happened super quickly. I didn't have to go into my email. I didn't have to download anything and then re-upload it as part of the transaction. It automatically uploaded it for you. This is the $250 a year fee. Did that look super hard to anybody? Looks pretty easy as a signer, right? Click, 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 and you're done. Make sure again you read the contracts. Are there any questions on DocuSign? Let's go over and sign the transaction using digital link. How do we switch our digital signature option again? We come back over to the top right, click on me, click on view profile. Now we're gonna click on settings. From here, we're gonna switch it from DocuSign to digital link. When I select digital link, have this as my preferred digital signature option, I'm now gonna hit save. Now my preference of signing documents is now through digital link. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back into the same transaction. We go to our documents. We have everything typed up. We come over to where it says e-sign. We create a new signature packet. We select our documents. We've got that PDF file that we selected. Come down below, hit close. Digital link is going to be used. Here are the documents that are going to be signed. 
we now hit next. Now we select our signers. Select them in their order. Put them in their order. I'm going to take these out here so I can show you how to digitally sign using digital ink. There is one nuance here, however. When I select my signers and I put them in my signing order, when I select next, this is something that Digital Link now offers. Digital Link understands, as well as CAR understands, of wire fraud computer hacking. Digital Link offers to you, the agent, the ability to add in cybersecurity for the digital signature session, in this case for the transaction. This used to be a $5 per signer per session charge. So meaning that if I had three signers here and I said add cybersecurity, this was a per session fee of $15 for this session. It would ask me for my credit card. Today, CAR has said, let's not make it per signer per session. Let's make it a one-time transactional fee for you, $5. So regardless of how many documents I send out for this transaction, as if I add in the cybersecurity, it's just a one-time fee of $5. I have the one signer today. I've got four signers tomorrow for this transaction. $5. What this does is it sends the signer a special code to their cell phone number to input in before they digitally sign the documents. I would say it's well worth the $5. I mean, it's just a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Whether you pay for it or you defer the payment to your client, if I hit add cybersecurity, a credit card field will appear for me to input credit card information into. But it is a choice. You don't have to add it, but maybe you want to add it for your client's to give them a peace of mind that you are taking steps to specifically protect them. Are there any questions on cybersecurity so far? Are there any questions on some of the steps so far of how we got here? In this case, I'm going to say no thanks because we're testing this today. Now I'm going to do, again, step three. So steps one through two are exactly the same because we're all doing it through zip forms. Now, step three here, this is what digital ink looks like. Here are the pluses and minuses about what I like and dislike about digital ink. One big plus that I really like about Digital Link thus far is that the form takes up the full size view of the screen. So it's now easier for me to read and review. Whereas if you noticed in DocuSign, the form took up maybe three quarters or half my screen size. So it's easier for me to read. Like DocuSign, there is no easy way to know what digital areas have already been pre-placed for me. So what I am again forced to do is scroll down on the document. If you'll notice here that instead of a flag that says sign, it's a big green bar that says what their signature is going to look like or will be. But we just go through and we just look at these documents quickly. Now, don't worry. Stan hasn't signed the documents yet because we haven't sent them yet. But this is just to remind me of who I'm currently signing for. So at the very top here, we got what document we're currently in, what signer we're currently working with, and over here to the left, what tasks that I can drag and drop or place in a form. Again, we click on the down arrow, we find that PDF document. Here on the PDF document, we can scroll down. For Stan, we click and hold his initials, we drag and place, or we scroll down to the area that I want them to sign in that PDF, we drag and place. Now, one of the things I like about the signature bots in Digital Ink is that it automatically drags over a date box, meaning that the date that they sign it, that's the date that will appear in this date box. I can move this box independently if I choose to, to the date section. We go to that commission agreement. Again, this document signed for, by that principal. We come over, we drag and drop the initials. We drag and drop the signatures just like so. Again, once we go through all the documents, making sure that all the signers have at least one thing to do in a form, we now can come over to the top right corner, click send. This is Digital Link. Are there any questions about how to set up and send out documents through DocuSign or through Digital Ink in zip forms? Look pretty similar, right? Let's show you what a signer experiences using Digital Link. Digital Link goes out, they receive it within the first 30 seconds. So now we're gonna go back into my email. Here, 
Now, instead of the zip or the DocuSign that says Anthony via DocuSign, it says that the email is coming from ZipLogic's Digital Link. Now, here in ZipLogic's Digital Link, it says your documents are ready to review. We click on the email. Instead of it being blue and yellow, it's instead gray and purple. But you'll notice here that now we have a button that says Sign Documents. So the signer is now going to click on Sign Documents. Here are some nuances about Digital Link and DocuSign that I like and dislike. If it's a signer signing documents, they do not need to worry about creating a user account or accessing an existing account. Your signers should always click on this choice here, guest. The reason why these two other choices are here are for other features within Zip Forms called the share. The share button allows you to share access into the transactions for a person to view, save, and print documents from within the transaction. Unless you're doing that with a client, your clients do not need to worry about creating a new user ID or password or accessing a pre-existing one. What they should do instead is access this choice over here to the far right called guest. They just click on the blue button that says continue without an account. From here, Digital Link will now open up. This is what we're going to need to do. Because Digital Link and ZipLogix work very closely with CAR, and CAR wants to make sure that everyone understands what it is that they're doing, you need to make sure that your clients read through the legal agreement. The legal agreement basically explains what a digital signature is and what the legalities are behind a digital signature. If you noticed, DocuSign didn't give you anything like that. So if someone wanted to argue their signature on a document, they could with DocuSign. Not that they can't with Digital Link, but at least the legal consent explains what digitally signing documents means. Hopefully, they will hit accept the terms. If they don't, that stops what we're trying to do today. So hopefully, they'll hit accept. Now, from here, they're going to hit next. At this point, what should happen is that the client will now create a password. What's super cool about creating the password is that they'll be able to pick their font style. Once they pick their font style or draw their font style, the next time you send them documents to digitally sign, that will uh, the system will keep the, that same font style consistent for all of the forms for this entire transaction. This is what I mean. So here I'm going to put in the, the password that I created. I'm going to say I'm going to update my signature so I can show you. Here are the font styles. Now, unlike DocuSign, and DocuSign gives you 23 different font styles to choose from, Digital Link only gives you six. But it also does give you the ability to write your initials and signatures. But again, typically the client's going to pick their font style. I recommend choosing the font styles over to the right. They're bigger and stand out more. These are really tiny, but these are really big and prominent. So you want your client's signatures to be seen. Once they pick a font style, and because they've typed in a password, we're now going to hit let's go. Now, Digital Link asks, would you like to review your documents or just go from one signature area to the other? If they hit go, then it's going to be just like DocuSign where they just are dropped from one signature choice or initial choice directly to the other one. So what I recommend is that you tell your clients, always hit let me review. When they click on let me review, this allows them to slowly read through the contract before they click the buttons to sign an initial. For you, because you should know the contracts, you can always hit go. Let me demonstrate go. Ready? Go. We just are now down at the bottom of the AD. Now, unlike DocuSign, where you only have the one flag that says sign in Digital Link, it highlights the entire line. The required fields are in yellow, but it says sign. When the client clicks on sign, they're now dropped to their next choice. If they clicked on the Let Me Review button, they would click on the sign and then go right on through to the contract reading everything. And again, Sign, sign, right on through the list. What the signer can now do is go through and initial and sign the documents. Just real quickly as I'm doing this, in the RPA, there are two paragraphs in the RPA, which are the liquidated damages and arbitration paragraphs. Now, technically, those paragraphs, according to the paragraphs, are optional initials. Now, if you noticed in DocuSign, just had us initial and sign everything. It didn't tell us anything that was optional because, hey, we just wanted to sign the documents quickly, right? Well, here, 
when I come across those types of paragraphs, Digital Link automatically highlights it in a different color. In this case, it's purple. And it even says that this is an optional initial. Now the signer needs to choose to either initial or opt out of this particular paragraph or term. So now they can pick or choose. But at least Digital Link shows them what in the contract is considered optional. Now they can choose to opt in or sign. Again, there's the other paragraph that's considered optional. Right back into required. As long as all the required fields are done, or all the initials and signatures are done, at this point, once everything is done, they can now click finish. The moment they hit finish, the email has now been sent off to the next signer within the first 30 seconds for them to sign the documents. Once all signers are done signing the documents, again, like with digit, uh, DocuSign, you are sent two things. One, you get an email that says your documents are completed. In that email will be the signed PDF documents. So Digital Link will actually put the documents in a PDF file in the email for you. Again, within the first 30 seconds, within the transaction itself, a folder is created within those first 30 seconds that says signature packet completed. And now here are the digitally signed digital ink documents that now I can email to the other agent, my clients, the assistant, the TC, whatever, or we can go over to the share button. But this is what the digitally signed documents look like in digital ink. There we go. There's the font style that they picked for their documents. This is free. Are there any questions on this? What I would suggest doing, create a transaction. In your transaction uh, that you're creating, call it test. So make a test transaction. Add at least one form to practice this. On the form, at least have a property address and a signer's name on it. If you're using the RPA, buy your home. Buy a fictitious property. Make yourself the buyer. And then email it out to yourself as if you were the buyer. And then practice what we just went over. Because again, with Digital Link, you can do this unlimited amount of times. DocuSign, you just got to be careful because unless you're paying for it, you only got to have five sessions free per month. But maybe you try it out once or twice, test it out, see which one you like better. Well, with all that said, I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. I hope you all enjoyed today and had lots of fun, learned lots of great information. And um, I look forward to talking with you all very soon. Have a great day and I will see you soon.